empathy from watching horror movies as a child. I know it's an odd statement, doesn't sound quite right to the ear, and it definitely goes against prevailing conventional wisdom. Case in point, a few years ago, an article was published in The New Republic entitled, What It Says About You If You Enjoy Horror Movies, in which the author suggested that aficionados of the horror genre actually lacked empathy. A lot of horror fans took exception to this article, myself among them. I've been a self-described horror hound since I was quite young, and I consider myself a very empathetic person. In fact, some of the most empathetic people I know are fellow horror writers. And not only do I refute the conclusions of the article, I take it a step further. I'm the empathetic person I am today because of what horror movies taught me. To fully understand what I'm talking about, allow me to give you a bit of background about my childhood, so you will see I did not learn empathy from any of the usual sources you might expect. I grew up in a household with a violent alcoholic for a father. My formative years were filled with fear and tension and the dread of waiting for the other shoe to drop, which it did quite frequently. My father was either a man withdrawn or a man in a rage. Empathy was not a lesson he imparted to me. In school, I was the quintessential outcast. From almost the first day of kindergarten, I didn't fit in, and the other kids sensed this like a scent on the wind and began a campaign of torment and ridicule that lasted pretty much until I graduated from high school. And not only did I have cruelty directed at me on a daily basis, I saw it used as a crude but effective weapon against other outcasts as well. I was surrounded by kids who seemed to derive great pleasure from making other kids cry. Empathy was not a lesson my peers imparted to me. And it wasn't just the other kids. I grew up in the 80s in a time less enlightened, which meant that teachers were not always role models themselves. I had a teacher who stood up in class and said he didn't understand why we were trying to find a cure for AIDS when it was ridding us of all the gay people. At the time, I wasn't yet secure enough in my own sexual orientation to really push back, but when I did point out that straight people got the disease as well, I was given the reply, then let's find a cure and only give it to the straight people. I saw teachers blame the kids being bullied for not being tough enough and courting their own misery. Empathy was not a lesson my teachers imparted to me. And we won't even spend much time on the Southern Baptist Church I attended, which seemed all about judgment over and feeling superior to others. Not a lot of empathy being taught there. So the only sources I had to learn empathy were movies. Later came books, but during those crucial early years, it was movies. And horror was always the genre I was most drawn to. I'm not sure I can explain why exactly, any more than someone can explain why they like spicy foods and someone else doesn't. At an inappropriately young age, I caught a bit of The Exorcist on television. And while I did end up hiding behind the sofa, I was hooked. Looking back with an analytical eye, I see what affected me so powerfully wasn't the 360 head spin or the pea soup. It was the fact that these events seemed to be happening to real people I could relate to. After that, I began to voraciously devour horror movies. It was the age of Halloween, Friday the 13th, A Nightmare on Elm Street, and I saw every new installment in the big franchises, as well as every smaller, more obscure horror film I could get my hands on. And what really excited me about these movies wasn't the blood and guts and the special effects. It was this alien feeling the films cultivated in me. The characters felt real, and I cared about them. I worried about their fates. I suffered when they suffered. And I felt triumphant when they triumphed. I put myself in their shoes. At the time, I couldn't put a name to this feeling, but now I see it for what it was. Not to put too fine a point on it, I was empathizing with these characters, an entirely new experience for me. And that's the main thing I think the author of the New Republic article didn't bother to understand. Horror fails when it desensitizes. True horror, successful horror, not only encourages empathy, but it actually hinges on it. Horror as a genre doesn't work if it can't pull an empathetic response out of its audience. 
Because in order to feel that primal emotion of horror, you have to care about the characters. You have to root for them, imagine yourself in their place. You have to want to see them survive. The horror comes from knowing that potentially some of the characters you've come to care for so deeply might not. I remember watching films with titles like Prom Night, April Fool's Day, Curtains, even the ridiculously titled Humongous. Films routinely dismissed by critics as mindless bloodbaths and becoming so invested in the characters that I was devastated when some of them were killed off, like I'd lost real-life friends. There's a scene near the end of the third Nightmare on Elm Street film where the death of a character actually made me cry. And to really illustrate just how profoundly these films taught me empathy, this reaction wasn't reserved to just the likable, heroic characters. One of my favorite films growing up was the Jamie Lee Curtis vehicle Prom Night. In it, there was a supporting character named Wendy, who was a real witch on wheels. Her character was manipulative, spiteful, and routinely made the lives of the more likable characters a nightmare. And yet, when she was engaged in an extended life-or-death chase scene with the killer at the end, I wasn't cheering for her death. I didn't want to see her killed off as some sort of just desserts for her bad behavior. The film revealed her basic humanity in that sequence. And I realized that just because someone is flawed and lashes out at others doesn't mean they deserve some horrible fate as punishment. This lesson I carried with me so that I could have empathy even for those who did not seem to have empathy for me. Because it's easy to feel for someone who's always nice and kind, but real empathy means you feel for everyone, regardless, just because they're fellow human beings on the planet. I learned that from prom night. <laughs> I'm in my mid-40s now, and I still love horror as much as ever. I enjoy horror movies, but horror literature is where I really thrive. As a writer myself, while I don't work exclusively in the horror genre, it is where I place the most focus. And when I do, I strive to create characters that are real and authentic, because I want the reader to feel empathy for them, thus heightening the suspense and tension of the tale. All stories require empathy from their audience, but with horror, it seems particularly important, or the thing just doesn't work at all. And you can take that empathy beyond the story and apply it to real life. And the world is in desperate need of more empathetic people right now. Horror doesn't decrease that number, but can actually increase it. So yes, odd as it sounds, and despite the misguided assertions in the New Republic article, I did in fact learn empathy from watching horror movies as a child. Thank you. Thank you.